Hello everyone and welcome back to Imperator Rome. I'm Lord Foreman, this time with a guide on 10 beginner nations that if you're new to Imperator Rome or you want to get better that you should consider playing. So first off we'll go with the game's namesake Rome. This is not going to be part of the 10 but I figure I should point it out. If you're new to the game, you've never played it before, you probably want to play Rome first because it is the best developed nation in the game. A lot of the mechanics of the game are designed around Rome. But, if you don't want to be stereotypical and go with Rome first, here's some other options. Some of these you might notice from my other guides and recommendations, but we'll start from the beginning. If you want to learn how to build commerce in Play Tall, Judea down here is perfect. They start out with their unique Judean heritage, obviously their relatively unique Jewish religion. There's a couple other nations that have it. Um, they have the Prophet Moses, which gives them free provincial developments every eight years. And uh, at the beginning of the game, they start as a subject of the Antigonids, but then they will, assuming the Antigonids lose the war, switch to being a tributary of Egypt, which allows you to develop peacefully. The next one is Egypt itself. Egypt is probably the most stable of the successor kingdoms at the start of the game. Um, the Seleucids over here have a lot of culture. The Antigonids are at war with everyone. Macedon and Thrace tend to get crushed by the Antigonids. But Egypt tends to sit pretty down here. They've got a large amount of land. They've got very rich land to develop. They've got a lot of food. So they can build a very tall population, play tall. You also have, assuming you have um, some of the DLCs like Heirs of Alexander and stuff, you get unique missions, unique events. Um, you also start off with a deified god of Alexander the Great, which is just awesome. The next nation that's on the easy end, I've divided this into three categories, is the Maura over here under Chandagupta. Um, it, you're the largest nation at the beginning of the game in terms of population, although not in size. Um, you've got, thankfully, a relatively Hindu population in the area, although you do have to deal with Buddhism and Jainism. It's not overly terrible. You've got a reasonable culture group size. You've got... A lot of small nations to the south to conquer, you've got some good tributaries to pay you money, and overall you're just a very stable, functioning country. Um, at this point you're just so large it's easy. Now, moving into the medium category, we're going to head slightly to the west and hit upon Bactria up here. So Bactria um, starts as a subject of the Seleucids, which of course is not, you know, ideal. But by and large, you're going to be left alone for most of the game and unless the Seleucids collapsed or you re rebel against them. You can't really expand, but you've got a lot of time to convert your lands, which are not Hellenic and not Macedonian. Um, overall, it's kind of like an expanded version of Judea. You're going to mostly be left alone, assuming the Maura don't come knocking for your lands. Um, but if you do get your independence early on and can sustain it, you can freely go through here and conquer all these little nations and in general just create a nice northern power up here. Uh, a cool little feature is because you are a satrapy of this, you can in fact bribe away the Seleucid governors and they won't try and kill you. So you can actually gain land through bribery. It's rather awesome. The next nation is of course the Seleucids themselves. They're the second largest nation at the beginning of the game in terms of population, largest in terms of territory. Unfortunately, they do have an event very early on that puts them at, either at war with the Maura or they have to surrender these lands. Um, if you get the event, by and large, you're going to want to surrender the lands because the Antigonids are going to start a war against Macedon and Thrace most of the time. And that leaves you a wonderful opportunity to invade, assuming you have the legacy of Alexander, uh, CB, and... The DLC associated with it, you can just take all the Antigonid lands. I did a game recently and I ended up with 650 provinces less than 20 years into the game just by literally swallowing these guys, declaring war on Thrace and swallowing all these. The only nation I didn't get a chance to invade was Egypt. Another reason that this uh, nation matters is because you start as the youngest of the successors. Um, all the other ones are basically older, with the exception of, I believe, the Thrace ruler. Yeah, you're the second youngest of the successors, which means you have a lot longer time to conquer, invade, and use that legacy of Alexander CB before your ruler dies. 
hopefully he doesn't die early. He's a really good commander. Um, the only thing you got to watch out for is lack of religious conversion and culture conversion in your lands. Thankfully, you do have some benefit towards it. Um, build a lot of temples, and great temples and great theaters everywhere, and you should be all set. And you can swallow all this up in an early war. Just put your troops on the border. Next nation. Now we're going to move into the slightly harder ones. Um, it's up for debate how hard these are, but I find them to be somewhat tricky. Sparta. So anyone who's ever watched 300 or anything about ancient, read about ancient Greece will know the Spartans were historically a very powerful, very uh, interesting country, very warlike. Um, they have a unique mission, they have unique events, they have unique heritage, all that make it really fun. They also start as the only large nation really on this peninsula. You want to invade and conquer these guys pretty quickly. These are the helots who used to belong to Sparta. Um, once you do that, you can freely, pretty freely rampage your way through here, watching out for leagues. You want to do it quickly because Macedon, assuming they survive and are not killed by the Antigonids, are going to be trying to take over this area as well. But if you do succeed, you get some legions, you get plus five discipline on your legions, which is just amazing. Um, it's just really fun to kind of role play them. The next nation is Etruria. So yes, Etruria sits right next to Rome. However, Etruria starts as a larger nation than Rome. They start as a regional power, which means if they alter one of their law, they can raise a legion at the start of the game. Um, that if they wanted to, they could attack Rome immediately. Be aware that Rome has several feudatories who will bring a fair amount of troops to their aid, so you're probably gonna want allies. But if you can hire mercenary or ally Carthage and use your starting legion to either gain land or kill Rome early on, Etruria basically just will then replace Rome. They have unique heritage, um, helps them build cities, doesn't really help them with conquest as much. Um, but overall, a very fun nation. Uh, you get the wonderful Latin military tradition tree, which will get you a huge tech lead, and you can basically play as a slightly more civilized Rome. Uh, then we hit the tribal nations. So the first tribal nation is probably my favorite and my favorite to recommend to people is over in Iberia. Vaxkea? <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Uh, there's a reason I picked this nation over all these other ones um, for people wanting to learn tribal nations. First off, you start off as one of the larger ones in the area. The others are rather close to Carthage that they tend to get killed. Uh, you start off with pretty good culture, you start off in the middle of a Druic area, you start off with a large amount of population that you can develop, and you can conquer things. Overall, it's a relatively safe nation to play if you want to learn how to play tribal. The next tribal nation I recommend is up here, Arvernia. Reason is, they have a unique heritage, which helps them with uh, building alliances and having subjects. They also get a random heavy infantry maintenance cost, which is nice when you get to a legion. But you start as a tribe, and so you can't get legions to your reform. But they start off with a large amount of population. Not as large as their neighbors, but uh, the unique heritage over the long run is better than your forest heritage benefit. So um, if you want to unite Gaul and try and resist Rome, this is the probably the best one to start with. Uh, other options are, of course, the ones on the furthest distance away from Rome, but you don't want to ever let Rome get that large. The next one is pretty much a total role-playing nation up here, Icenia, or Icena. Uh, this nation is best known for the warrior queen that fought against the Romans, Boudica, who almost kicked them out. Uh, she's got that wonderful heritage up here. Obviously, you probably won't get her just because of the way the game goes, um, but... Uh, it's not the largest nation, but the unique heritage makes it a little bit more fun to play with. It makes it a little bit easier to develop a rich, civilized nation. Your goal is these should obviously to unite the uh, British Isles here as soon as you can. Um, there's an achievement for uniting all of it within a certain time period, and I missed it myself by like two months. It was infuriating. But overall, if you wanted to play a tribal nation and just rampage your way across an area where you're not going to get invaded by any great powers for probably the whole length of the game. I haven't seen Rome manage to invade Great Britain, the British Isles up here in the course of normal gameplay. Obviously it could happen, but you can conquer this area and build your own nicely civilized British country. So those are the nations I've recommended. 
I'll tell you why I didn't recommend these successors right through here, Epirus, Macedon, Thrace, and the Antigonids. Mainly they started big wars with each other, and for a new player who may not be feeling overly confident with wars and defense, they're probably not the best way to go. But once you get used to them, uh, Macedon and Thrace are slightly easier. The problem is the Antigonids are just so huge and get invaded on by everybody that I don't recommend them for this. So hopefully this has helped you guys figure out some more interesting nations to play. I'll be back with more guides in the next couple days, and I will see you guys all then. Bye for now.